I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, my second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's going on, guys? Bengal again here, coming back at you with another podcast. Welcome back to the seventh round bust podcast with wheels. Hello. We're back recording. The senior bowl has ended. And uh, the Super Bowl is right around the corner. Yep. That's all I got for you. <laughs> See you next week. Yeah. Yeah. So Super Bowl, Senior Bowl, prospect breakdowns of uh, Ed Oliver, Dwayne Haskins, Nick Bosa, and Hakeem Butler. So, uh, you know, interesting episode, I guess. A lot of you guys wanted our Super Bowl picks, so that's what this episode. I've, hold, I've is. held on to mine for a while, man. <laughs> Everybody's asking. Yeah. I'm like, what's this? What's the big game? <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, uh, make sure you guys check out the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Leave a leave a rating on the podcast helps us out and uh, give it a listen and all that. So, uh, and by the way, from now on, the podcast will be on there first because we'll, we'll be able to get the audio portion up pretty quickly. So, you know, if you want to hear the podcast right away, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. There you go. Muy bueno. So, uh, we'll start off with the Super Bowl picks. Or Super Bowl, yeah. Super Bowl picks. I'm excited to find out who Big Boy is. Big Boy. Yeah. Part of the halftime show with Maroon 5 and Travis Scott. There's a Big Boy? Yeah. There's I didn't a hear about B- this. Big space B-O-I. Looks like a... Uh, is it a person? Antoine Andre Patton. Yeah, he's from Savannah, oh. Georgia. He's... He's 5'6". I don't know about Big Boy. I thought you were saying, I'm, I wonder who the Big Boy is. I'm like, who's like a Big oh, Boy? Oh, you know what? He was uh, he was in Outcast. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, I, and people are going to be like, you don't know Outcast? Like, I know Andre 3000. Yeah, yeah. Give me a break. All so right? he's, the, he's the, uh, the, other he's the other guy. He's the other guy. He's the other guy. Rip. The Called least. up Andre 3000. Hey, you want to wanna come on? And he's like, uh, no. No. <laughs> I'll pass. So, yeah, Patriots Rams, of course. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. If you can, if you can guess on the first time, what uh, Outcast like uh, Andre three thousand, what he named his son. What do you think his first name is? Um, of his son. Uh, I'm guessing it's some wild. <laughs> his name is Andre. I assume Loren, may, may, Lauren Benjamin. His son, his first name is, it's a number. Two. Seven. Mm. <laughs> Seven Serious Benjamin. It's quite mm. a name. <laughs> Ugh, I, don't, I don't like that. But. Hater. So, yeah, Super Bowl picks. What are, what are we thinking here? Dude, I got the Patriots. And the reason I have the Patriots, who, uh, Upset everyone last year when the Philadelphia Eagles managed to win their first Super Bowl. Uh, oh, no one wants a Patriot. Listen here. A, a Patriots dynasty continuing on is better than the Eagles or anything happening to that trash city of Philadelphia. Am I cutting a promo right now? What's going on? I don't know. Um, but, like, here's where I stand. Here's what I think it comes down to. The Rams pretty weak defense yep they both have good offenses but you know what stepped up so big in the playoffs is the defense of the patriots they shut down the chargers they played super well in the uh conference championship against the against the chiefs i know the chiefs still put up some points the chiefs had one of the best offenses in the entire nfl the rams are right there uh i think they will manage to put up some points but i think right now i'm gonna go with the momentum i think the patriots can effectively score at will And I think if the Rams stall out and they can't score a will because of the Patriots' defense stepping up and playing so well in the playoffs, as they have, their pass rush has been decent. Adrian Claiborne's an animal. I don't know why, but he is. Their pass protection's been good uh, for the Patriots. I just think everything's going right for them right now. And if they have Stephon Gilmore continuing to play like the best CB in football, which I don't know how you can even say he's not right now. He had an unbelievable season. Like the lowest passer rating allowed. 
Just a shutdown cornerback on his side. Jason McCourty's played well. Devin McCourty's good. You have two interchangeable safeties that you work out with. Deron Harmon, Patrick Chung, they're both solid. Dante Hightower is slow as anything, but he tackles well. Yet still, Trey Flowers. I mean, this defense is stepping up, and the offense with Belichick, Brady. They can score at will. No one can stop them, especially not the Rams. I'm going Patriots here. I'm going to give you a final. I think the Patriots score... 30-37, 30-37, and I'm going to give the Rams 24. 37-24 is my final. Ooh. I don't think it's that close. Over. You're taking the over, then, on the over-under. I, I didn't check the spread or anything. Like over-under is, uh, I'm looking at it right now, 56 and a half. Spread is 2 and a half. I hear the Rams are favored. Rams are favored. I'm taking the Patriots all day. Actually, all no. day. Uh, I think the Patriots are favored, actually. Oh, are they? Somebody told Two me. Half. Uh, That's I'm, all assu- I'm assuming it's going back and forth. Neutral side, mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Um, I, I, I take the. I'm betting on the Patriots. I really would. Just how do you count out Tom Brady? Right, like in any situation, how do you count out Tom Brady? Let me give you a situation. You tell me if you'd like him or somebody else. Uh, it's an inverted uh, play. We'll take a fake reverse rollout pass from uh, a wide receiver or a running back or a tight end doesn't doesn't matter you know i'm trying to give all these situations tom brady runs a wheel and you got to throw it to him would you take him there <laughs> i was wondering I where I, you're going with that i can't i couldn't remember exactly how the <laughs> play set up I'm like where are you going with this <laughs> and then I, instead of saying reverse at first i said inverted i'm like all right how do i talk my way out of this mistake <laughs> no I, I couldn't remember the way they set up i think it was like a, a, a handoff fake reverse or it was a handoff to a reverse and then a throw. Yep. I don't remember what happened. It was it was a while, a year ago. I'm trying to remember one play. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, it's hard. Tom Brady dropped it for those who didn't see the game. <laughs> it's it's been interesting because like looking at the playoff matchups, the Rams like both of their games were pretty close, like one score mm-hmm. games against the Cowboys and the Saints. Patriots, I mean, obviously they went to overtime with the Chiefs, but, like, they were dominating a lot of that game against the mm-hmm. Chiefs. And, uh, of course, the Chargers, that was, whew, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. So, I think just as a team in general, I think the Patriots are better as a whole team. Um, We'll see, though. If that pass rush could get in for the uh, Rams, then it'll make a difference. But, like, Tom Brady just gets rid of the ball so fast that – Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's even. It's hard to even get pressure on him. So, uh, I, I gotta take the the Patriots, man. Like, I know people Rams don't like it when we pick pissed. the same, but I gotta like, I don't know. I I, I go Patriots, getting uh, Tom Brady getting the sixth Super Bowl ring. Does he the retire? The only time Tom Brady has ever struggled, really, like the only Super Bowls they've lost to are from elite defensive lines. That's what the Rams have, at least on the interior, and that's what the Eagles had. You know, that's what the Giants had. Yeah. I don't I don't know, man. I feel this like the Rams have a good D-line. I just don't think it's going to matter. Does pay, does Tom Brady retire after this if the Patriots win? Nah. Uh, I don't think so. I do think the Rams so. retires though. I would be on on board with that happening. The reason I think is like what's the reason that most players retire, right? They the fire dies down, they get too old and they're not performing well, or the, I want to spend time with my family. Have you seen videos of Giselle celebrating Tom Brady when he, when yeah. he does anything from <laughs> home? She's hype, all right? Like he's not he spends time with his family, right? He's still performing at an elite level. People are Tom Brady fell off. Pull up his numbers. He didn't fall How? off. He didn't. He didn't. So I don't He's know, man. 40, uh, what, 42? 40, 41. 41. 41. Still performing um, this well? I, I, I don't I think, think he retires. I think Gronk retires just because of the injuries. Think, He's had it. It, I, it looks like he's up. in pain. Yeah. Looks like he's a hurt. But, I mean, de- the Rams could definitely win. They Their offense is good. I, I don't know what's going on with Todd Gurley, but I'm sure, like, he'll be fine in the Super Bowl. He'll be rested up, ready <laughs> to go. He'll be rested up. So, you know, maybe – Maybe it, I think the big thing with the Rams is they can't go down big early because when they when they go away from the run game, it's uh, not a good time. So, but I, I think I go Patriots. 
score final score will be an interesting one. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little bit less points here. I'm gonna go with the classic 24 21. That's a close one. Yeah, I think so, I think so it'll so be close. I think it'll be close, but same Brady. result, wildly different scores. Brady magic are. at the end. Brady like end game two minute drill to win the game. But. We'll see. I hope it's a close game. <laughs> I like uh, I like close Super Bowls because they're fun. That's all I really care about. Like at the end of the day, um, I don't really care win. who wins. Yeah. I just want a good game. I just want a really yeah, good game. I agree. It's like uh, a lot of the bowl games. Yep. In college football, I don't, I don't care who wins the national championship. I wasn't like, oh, Alabama, poor, poor Tide. No, but I just wanted it to be a good game. So I was a little bit disappointed mm-hmm. that uh, Clemson ended up blowing it out. And that's like all the Super Bowls where they're not close. I fell asleep. Like, before halftime of the Seattle-Denver Super Bowl. That was bad. I'm like, I don't really want to – I just – I wasn't that I didn't want to be there. It was just – I was just a little bit sleepy. And then I just woke up. It was, like, midway through the third quarter. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's still awful? Okay. Dude, I was the same with the uh, the Patriots-Falcons. When they were down 28-3, to I'm like, oh, this is over. I'm about to go do mm-hmm. something else. And then uh, I'm glad I kept watching because – Magic. Magic happened. I watched that game with, uh, like – Three or four Patriots in a college dorm room. It was, or Patriots not Patriots. Patriots. They were fans. they were in the, they were playing in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Patriots fans from like from Massachusetts and Rhode Island, um, yeah, which is pretty much Massachusetts. Yeah, I did not really <laughs> want the Patriots to win that one. I was like, yeah, let's see the Falcons win. But no, Dan Quinn is a uh, not good at managing the clock. It seems like at all. Who would you rather have managing the clock for you, Andy Reid? Or Dan Quinn, Andy Reid. Andy Reid's gotten better. <laughs> They're both bad though. Also, Matt or, Ryan or taking sacks Les was Miles. just bad. Yeah, it's true. in bad spots. Less <laughs> miles. Spike at the end. <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah. Jordan Jefferson. That. Uh, but like uh, Dan, LSU, Ole Miss. But Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is like. You remember? Uh, I think uh, who did it? SB Nation did a video on this where Dan Quinn took like a field goal down four. With like four minutes left in one game, <laughs> it's like why? <laughs> Pretty sure SB Nation did did a video on it. Yeah, I mean, there's something. So. It's like you're you're thinking about it too hard. <laughs> if if take the easy decision. Like, I, I was watching a video yesterday that said, uh, "This isn't like the movies. The like most likely culprit, most likely suspect, is the guy who did it." Yeah, yeah. that's same thing. If if it seems like the obvious choice, it's because it is. Do it. Is that you know? Don't overthink it. Something easy. Yeah, <laughs> it, but Andy Reid's gotten better. I think Andy Reid's gotten better with uh, managing the clock. Les Miles is bad. Yeah, yeah, he's back in Kansas now. Yeah, That'll that's be gonna be that's gonna be fun. You get to see him at least once a year, probably once a year. I mean, when I say see, I don't mean like I'm a Texas Longhorns fan. For those who don't know, many of you probably know at this point. Uh, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch a Kansas game. <laughs> it just, it just yeah. won't happen. Uh, I don't Maybe I'll tune in Kansas. in the fourth quarter of a good game, you know, like uh, yeah, if, if they're try- pulling off an upset or something. I you just want to see. Uh, I just want to see fake field goals on ESPN or whatever. the Mad Hatter on Twitter, actually, because I don't watch ESPN. <laughs> no, no, I'll see it on Twitter <laughs> if he does a fake right. field goal. We shifting to a different bowl. Yep, the, the Senior uh, Bowl. The passed. Senior Bowl. I was, on was the bored. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was a little bit disappointing, a little bit lackluster. Um, not a lot of offense was being played, and it's not like there were a bunch of like real good defensive plays. It was just kind of like a lot of uh, – it felt like a lot of three and outs and just like drop passes. It's just like there's so much on the line here. Just step up, missed field goals. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? What am I watching? So it was a little weird, but – there were some big players who stepped up, or not maybe big players, but there were some guys who stepped up. Nasir Adderley had a pick. That's kind of like the uh, guy Wheels and I fanboy over in the draft, it seems. Oh, yeah. Um, who else Debo. played particularly Debo. well? Debo Samuel was good. And um, apparently he had a really good pra- like practice during the week, too. Mm-hmm. Who else? Who'd they say? They said somebody was unblockable. I forget who they said in the uh, Montez like, Sweat. Practice. Might have been Montez Sweat. I think it I know, was. I know he had a good week. And a lot of the defensive line uh, prospects looked really good. That was where I would say you found most of the standouts. Like 
Uh, Daylon Mack played pretty well. Mm-hmm. Who was the other Texas A&M defensive lineman who's escaping oh. my name right now? Yeah, I can't think of his name right now. I'll, I'll figure it out. Who else? Who else was good? Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, who, who's the? Uh, well, I don't know if he had a good game. I just heard he had a good practice. Uh, Rockison. He had a terrible game. He was awful. I think he. Yeah, he I apparently <laughs> had a good practice. Kingsley Kiki, by the way. Kingsley Kiki. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That is the that is the name right there. There were a lot of defensive linemen who just looked so, really really solid. Yeah, the linemen look good. The quarterback play. The offensive play, linemen look good, too. Some of them. Yeah, some of the offensive linemen look good. The quarterback play was not good. <laughs> I think no. uh, I think the most I'm disappointed about in quarterback play is Will Greer. <laughs> he did not look good. Yeah, no, not at all. Dontavious yeah, Russell was solid. Yeah. The Auburn defensive tackle. That That is the South team. We you know who else the, didn't look good? <laughs> Chris Boyd. <laughs> Chris Boyd was terrible. He was so I, again, bad. You, I, we've been saying it for a while now, and I've been all over this for actual years now. Yep. Is that Chris Boyd is the most overhyped player, maybe in the history of any game, any maybe the history of being alive. Right? He got three penalties in the first quarter. He was getting torched as well. It was horrific. So it, when I got into that an argument with that CBS sports writer who I'm going to go back to that tweet, by the way, and I will quote tweet him again and I will make him look like a fool when Chris Boyd doesn't get drafted in the top three rounds. Cause who would, I wouldn't take him. No, I wouldn't take it. He looks so bad. It, was it back to back penalties or like two penalties, like three plays or something yeah, like that Two penalties in a row. And then another one, like, so uh, the bad. first one was at the start and then he had back to back penalties. They just, all you have to do is throw at Chris Boyd and it's going to be a long day for a uh, Chris Boyd. Let's yeah, see here. So bad. Yeah, but... Chuma Idoga, the USC left tackle, looked really good. Mm. Who else? Charles Amena, who had a decent game, the yes. Texas defensive end. Yes, he actually had a pretty good game. Heard his name called Kay- a lot. Kalen Saunders, the defensive tackle out of Western Illinois, that does uh, backflips and, and stuff, yep. like gymnastics at six foot two, three hundred and ten pounds. <laughs> He's crazy. He had a great game as well. Um, yeah. Those were some standouts. He went to Western Illinois, an FCS school. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. There was someone else I'm, uh, that's escaping me. Andy Isabella, I think. Uh, he looked he looked solid. He, yeah, he looked good. I don't know if he made like huge plays, but he definitely looked pretty good. Hunter Dexter Renfro. Williams, the Notre Dame running back, couldn't catch the ball at all. Yeah, out of the back, like he had like two or three drops. Yeah, Keelan Doss. Keelan Doss yes. is the other one yes. that really stood out. The UC Davis receiver, mm-hmm. who has a ton of like records there, I'm pretty sure. He was uh he was incredible. And they dropped the Keenan Allen comp, and I'm like, oh my god, that is so accurate. Yeah. Uh, that was Daniel Jeremiah. And then Bucky Brooks came out. He actually reminds me of this guy, and I'm like, eh, I don't really see that at all. But he does he, look, said, he does remind I, me of Keenan Allen. I do remember the Keenan Allen. He said someone ridiculous. I was like, yeah, we're I didn't, both I didn't like, like what is he talking about? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, Tyree Jackson. I, did he say good. Julio? J- he might have said Julio. I, I can't. Remember. I can't. I can't recall. I'm not I gonna. I'm remember. not gonna put words into his mouth. The uh, he, yeah, just the quarterbacks in general were pretty disappointing. Like, I don't think Daniel Jones was that great. Ryan was, Finley looked the best, but Ryan didn't Finley Daniel good, Jones like, win offensive MVP. Daniel Jones won MVP somehow. How? I don't how? know how. He, uh, he I was, don't know. He was the know. fourth best quarterback at best. Finley, and then either Drew Locke or Tyree Jackson. Tyree Drew- Jackson missed some throws, but he, he looked yeah. he le- at least looked impressive in some aspects. Drew good Locke for, didn't hurt himself. Good for where he's Drew- ranked in the draft right now. Yeah, yeah. Drew Locke, you saw what you saw. Inconsistency on on like tape and stuff. Inconsistent, but great arm. So. Yeah. Drew Locke, uh, he didn't hurt himself. Like he maybe in his stock. maybe helped himself because he didn't look bad. He looked good. um, and then like I was reading reports where he interviewed well, and apparently he mm-hmm. looked he did well mm-hmm. uh, picking up plays on in practice, which is all good signs for teams looking for a quarterback that he can learn plays quickly. So Iman Marshall looked all right, if I recall, and he's someone who was like this was the number one cornerback <laughs> in college football when he was coming in, and they just didn't really play to that at all. Uh, yeah. But he looked solid, man. So, I mean, he has some high upside, high potential. Very physical CB. Yeah. 
So I'm trying to think of someone else, but it was weird. The what what'd you think about the helmet stickers that John Gruden was doing? Did you like it? That's 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 his draft strategy. He thinks he has them now when he <laughs> gets the stickers on. Uh, no, I mean I no, dude. Some people were like, I don't even I don't get this at all. This is this is stupid. What <laughs> what are they doing? I'm like, it's it's motivation. Have you never seen this before? With like Ohio State, uh, Colorado State. I mean, so many schools do the stickers on the helmet. It's a motivator. When you make a good play, you get another sticker. You want the most stickers. It's just a competition. It's you know why you want the most trophies in a sport or the most gold medal, what a gold star when you're five years old, whatever it is. I'm all for it. Yeah. Make a play, get a sticker. I'm in. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Other than that, I mean, I wish Josh Allen was there, but he backed out. So that's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, mm-hmm. Next, we have the uh, combine, I guess, to look forward to, which invites started going out today. So, we'll combine is beginning of March. What is it March first? Um, like the the process starts late February. Uh, the actual events are in March. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I do want to say now, I, I see his name. Uh, in the Senior Bowl, they were, like, throwing up graphics of Garrett Bradbury, the center from uh, <laughs> NC State. Like, he was the starting quarterback. It was it was so weird. They were marking him on the field. Like, you don't know where the center is. and They're going into commercial, and it's just his face. <laughs> yeah. With, with, with his like, name. It's like, what is the, happening? The, arm, the arms crossed, and, you know, when they kind of, like, do the, the, the turn to the side. It's like. Or, or, or the, like, like, looking up into the camera. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Where they're just looking down, and they just arms crossed. and yeah looking up right into it i'm like this is a, this is the center Did you not have a daniel jones graphic or drew or some a quarterback that was, a, that was the only one wide. i no. saw too <laughs> yeah i know i didn't see any for anybody else just garrett brad that's the only one they prepared i'm like weird that was funny yeah so senior bowl i mean it was yeah but uh, some people improved their stock debo definitely improved his stock it's Debo. just such a tight receiver race that, like, Debo you know, might have shot himself up you can into do. the first round. Like, the that's thing how is, good of a senior bowl he did. I don't know how fast Debo's going to run because you think he would run fast, but he looks more quick than fast. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know if he's going to be low four four. And we'll that, that, I mean, that's 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 what that's a time that really would boost your stock as a receiver four four two, something like yep. that four four flat. Obviously, is a really great time. I don't know if he's going to run that. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, that was actually a uh, viewer question, which I guess we could get into later. But uh, it was like, what positions does the combine help out the most, or something like that? Well, uh, the, an- the, sh- the the short answer is all of them, but quarterback. Yeah, pretty much. Because with offensive linemen, you're looking at lateral mobility. We'll get into it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, we'll get into it later. Senior Bowl. Some people improved their stocks. Some people got hurt. I think Wilger stock really yeah. went down with this senior bowl, and it's very really, very disappointing because I'm pretty high on Wilger. He just has some inconsistencies. They all do. Every quarterback Ugh. in this class, as we'll get to in a bit, they all have they all have some notable weaknesses. It's not like it's a pure prospect, which we'll get into a little bit later as well. Yeah, it's just it's just um, not the best quarterback class. When There's, I say a little bit later, like we're we're there we're, now. Yeah, we're going to <laughs> prospect breakdowns now. now. So who are we starting with? Let's start with, uh, I mean, let's start with Ed Oliver, I guess. So, Ed Oliver, D tackle, 6'3, 292 is what he's listed at mm-hmm. from Houston. He was a five star recruit coming out of high school, but chose to go he to was Houston. Monster. Chose to go to monster. Houston. So, I don't, is he from the area? I think, I think he's from Houston. He's got to be. To be a five star recruit and choose yeah, to go to Cl- born, uh, Houston. Born in Houston. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I almost so. wonder, like, why would you not go to A and M's? Not far, of course. University of Texas at Austin, not far. TCU would probably be even better, better, uh, better spot, I should say. Why, why go to Houston? Well, TCU is further from Texas. Yeah, I'm but, saying, yeah. but these are these are places. Yeah, I don't, it, was, it was just weird. Was L- just weird LSU, that. LSU would have made LSU a ton of sense. LSU is close too. <laughs> yeah, it's and, just any of those strange. Places. It's strange that he went to Houston, but yeah, to be yeah. fair, when he commit. Houston was probably getting ranked. That was when Tom Herman was there. Which, in true, which case, why didn't true. why didn't Ed Oliver transfer to Texas, dude? That'd be sick. <laughs> it would have been awesome. Yeah, but 
Ed Oliver, I mean, we've been hyped about Ed Oliver for a while. Like we said, five star recruit, playing played very well in college. He's uh strong. He's definitely strong. Uses Have his you strength. seen his recent tweet? I, I hate to get off the yeah, prospect go ahead. breakdown. Go on, go on. If I own do none, I'm a ball. Musical notes emote. I F, you know, space. I O N do N U N I M A ball. Okay. Weird. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I don't know why I had okay. to interject there. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Ed Oliver. I mean, he's a super strong guy. Definitely strong. He, I, I think he likes the bull rush, and it's effective for him. He pushes the center slash guard back a lot into players, which uh, mm-hmm. is fun to watch on tape when he pushes a lineman into a running back. That's fun. I think he's quick off the snap. He uses his hands pretty well. Um, incredibly athletic for a D tackle too, and that's probably where he's going to play his D tackle. Uh, he doesn't really take plays off, but I will say one thing about that I didn't really like about him is that uh, he doesn't. It's uh, it's weird to explain this, but he doesn't watch the ball sometimes. So like he'll get fooled by play fakes pretty easily. So like it, he'll just go and tackle the running back almost every time. That's what that's one thing I noticed on play fakes. Um, and he does. He really doesn't use pass rush moves. It's just the bull rush. He's he's so strong that he can do that. Stronger than uh, he's fast, but he stuffs the middle of the uh of the line pretty well. So you know, running backs running out the middle. He stuffs that pretty well. And I don't know, I really like him. I really like him. He has all the potential in the world to be the next Aaron Donald, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion. And he's definitely a top ten prospect for me. I don't know why he's going down draft boards, aside from the fact that. Oh, the coach told him to take the jacket off on the sidelines, and he got mad about it. <laughs> it's pretty much what. It, oh, he's going down draft boards now. Uncoachable. He's uncoachable. I, I really like him. I really like him. He's, of course, explosive, strong, powerful. Plays low, fantastic leverage on him, and he actually does really, really well against double teams. He can mm-hmm. split them with his speed. He can power through them a lot, and he's double teamed a lot of the time at being at Houston. Um, his bull rush is his best move, if you will. will get to his cons in a second here. Uh, and he's versatile. He's played edge at Houston. Not effectively, really. But uh, he, he has played there. I think his best fit is as a 3-4 defensive end or 4-3 defensive tackle. He could play 3-4 defensive tackle, too. People say his size is a concern, but he's 6'3", 292. Can bulk up maybe even a 300. And he's got 15 pounds on Aaron Donald in that case. And... Uh, right now he's got like almost ten on Aaron Donald. I think I think Aaron Donald's six foot one two eighty two. Um, yeah. So I don't the size doesn't bother me. I don't know why people are. I think people are freaking out. They're looking for something, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, he's borderline unblockable as a run defender. He his first push is so so strong and so powerful. It's crazy. A lot of that's at leverage. And I think he has a really great motor actually. Mm-hmm. Um, He's going down the field. Like you'll see a wheel route to the running back. He'll be off to the races, and Ed Oliver's going down the field with great speed to try and wrap up and make the play. And you don't see that from even defensive ends or some linebackers in some cases. And he's doing it as a defensive tackle. Some cons, though, uh, he needs to work more on winning with technique versus just pure athleticism. Because while athleticism's fine uh, at college at Houston, you need to develop more technique to be effective on a down-to-down basis in the NFL. Look at Aaron Donald, who was a great technique player, was at Pitt, uh, and didn't win so much with athleticism, but actual technique plus his speed. And he's a less powerful player than, than uh, Ed Oliver, in my opinion. He needs to develop pass rush moves. He doesn't have any. It's the bull rush. That's yeah. really it. So they're inconsistent, if non-existent, for, for pass rush moves. He has really no finesse. He's just pure power. Uh, and the last con here is he's undisciplined, which means two things. But he's penalty prone, and he will bite on those play fakes and things like that. Um, but you know, I don't really mind that so much as a defensive tackle because if, right. if the running back has the ball, I mean, you got to go after it, and you're going to see a lot less, uh, lot less option offense in the NFL. I think he's a stud, versatile player. His talent for me is top ten. I, I want to say like top five, but I just I worry about the athleticism versus technique thing i tweeted out today if you guys don't follow me on twitter slash bengal designs fun little 
promotion there. Uh, it's like Jadavian Clowney versus Khalil Mack in the 2014 draft. Do you take the unbelievable, never-before-seen athlete, Jadavian Clowney, or do you go for the great technique player in in uh, Khalil Mack? In, uh, Khalil Mack. So it, that's a Quinn and Williams versus Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver's great. Very, very strong, very powerful. I like him a lot. My comparison here is uh, Warren Sapp, which is kind of crazy because he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, I think the size is closer. He... Uh, Warren Sapp is 6'2", like 290, so I think it's right there. Warren Sapp also is clocked at the 40 at 4'69", and I really think that Ed Oliver is going to run sub 4'7". I think Ed Oliver is going to be in that that high 4'6 range, 4'6'7", maybe. Aaron Donald ran at 4'65", and then 4'6'6". Saw that earlier today. Mm -hmm. I really think that that, uh, Ed Oliver is going to be in that range with Aaron Donald, with Warren Sapp. And it's crazy to compare him to a Hall of Famer. But it's just I'm trying to get someone with the similar size to athletic profile to honestly dominating uh, level of play. And I think Warren Sapp does make a lot of sense. Warren Sapp was more of a finesse player than uh, Ed Oliver is. But, again, no comparison is really going to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, Warren Sapp was 6'2", 300. Yikes. So, um, yeah, Ed Oliver, really good. I really, really like Ed Oliver. So he was, uh, he was fun to watch. It was fun to watch. And like you said about that player fake thing, like the play fake thing, it's like kind of like trying to find a negative with that. Mm-hmm. If, if the running back has a ball, it's a tackle for a loss. That's pretty much what it is. So, yeah, I, I like that, Oliver. All right, next prospect. Possibly the best quarterback in this class? Maybe. Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> Maybe. So I'll start off with this one. Yep. Um, we're, We'll go with some pros. As you guys, if you're watching this on Prospect Breakdown, you already know some of these, but I'm going to go – to some more depth in this one. I think he excels at going through progressions, which is rare of this quarterback class because when you look at Drew Locke, one-read QB, uh, Daniel Jones, kind of a one-read quarterback, Kyler Murray, one-read quarterback. Dwayne Haskins actually excels at looking all over the field and finding the right place to go with the ball. Destroys zone coverage. He makes smart reads. He's making the smart throw uh, nine times out of ten. And some of his interceptions are actually the fault of the wide receiver where they can't catch the ball on good throws and get popped up in the air and picked off. Uh, so I think he's smart, and he's going to do what he has to do sometimes versus maybe being super explosive with the big play. Stands tall in the pocket. I wish he'd step up more into the pocket uh, and climb, but as I'll get into it just in a little bit, um, I don't really worry about that as much. He's got great zip on his throws, but I, to each positive here, I'm going to come back with a negative. I think he has good general accuracy fantastic anticipation and usually his touch is pretty good and he really got better as the season progressed I didn't like him too much uh at the beginning of the season or really through the middle because this is first season starting he looked shaky in a lot of instances uh, but he really does hit the different levels of the defense really really well here's some cons though and a lot of this is from the beginning of the season I think his Washington tape was really really solid where he just carved up the zone defense but He's sometimes too strong on short passes. Like, he'll he'll whip the ball in there unbelievably fast. Say, hey, take something off of it. Get the easy yards. You don't have to make it a tough play. It's an easy play. Uh, he has a tendency to not step into throws. So that goes kind of along with climbing the pocket. When he's standing tall, he'll just kind of release it tall. He doesn't really step into some of them, which uh, is somewhat of a concern. He's an average athlete. This is not a dual-threat quarterback. This is a pure pocket passer who offers little mobility, if any at all, uh, his deep ball can be inconsistent. His accuracy on those can be sometimes pinpoint lasers, sometimes not even close. His numbers are so inflated. Oh, my God. <laughs> Run after the catch from the wide receiver screens. I've never seen a more screen and run after the catch dependent offense in this past year at Ohio State. <laughs> All it was, J.K. Dobbins, Paris Campbell, uh, K.J. Hill. Uh, Mike Weber. I mean, they were. It was so many screens and and uh, dump offs. It was crazy. So I don't take his numbers as being like true ability. And he's terrible under pressure. In the Penn State game, he was just he, he looked awful. He was throwing off his back foot a lot. And it was really a bunch of more of those screen concepts and those those dump offs and those throwdowns. And his accuracy off his back foot was just not good. He wasn't wasn't consistent enough and under pressure he doesn't really seem to know what he's doing um and his accuracy can be suspect 
sometimes it's right there. Sometimes it's not. Um, and he's inexperienced. Only one season of starting in the NCAA. But he got better as the season progressed. So I think the, showing the progression from week one all the way up through the bowl game it was very good to see. I think his talent is probably uh, second round. I, I don't think he's an unbelievable quarterback. I think he's the best in the class. This is true talent, though. Um, maybe a first-round caliber player. He'll certainly go in the first round, probably top 10, probably even top 5. On my big board, he'll probably be top 25, so it's like first, second-round talent, somewhere in that range. And uh, my comparison is uh, I don't really have one. Yeah, I couldn't find one either. <laughs> I, I tried. I thought about it. He's like a smaller Big Ben to me, almost. Because he's only 6'3". Big Ben's like 6'6", six, six, right? Something like that. He, he's big, yeah. And then Big Ben had some more mobility. Comps are weird. I, I just don't really have one. Yeah. So, yeah, Dwayne Haskins, 6'3", 220 from Ohio State. Uh, a lot of what you said. He sometimes steps into throws – at least he doesn't fade on throws. That's like the mm-hmm. big thing. Like, yeah, you know, no, he does. He does. But I'm saying not a, a lot not, of the time. Not like Kyler Murray. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't fade like Kyler Murray. He definitely steps into throws. Like he, sometimes. And like you said, as the season went, went on, like he got better. A lot better. So, uh, and that's the same thing with pressure. At the beginning of the season, he dealt with pressure really terribly. But as it went on, he started to get a little bit better. He It wasn't still the best. Like, he didn't deal with it the best, but it was getting better and better. Um He's definitely not a scrambler. Uh, <laughs> like they, they ran some him out of the pocket with him, and will, it did not yeah. do a thing. When teams forced him out of the pocket, he would roll out, and it, he'd be like a fish out of water. Mm-hmm. It was it was play over. He's a he's a pocket passer. This guy mm-hmm. is a pocket passer, which eh, might help him out. Uh, I almost want to pr- say he's like Eli in some regards. <laughs> it's, it's weird. He, throw, he throws lasers sometimes, but what I notice is sometimes he'll throw the lasers, and then other times it looks like the ball is just floating, and mm-hmm. he'll overthrow people, and I hated that. He'll sail on some wide receivers. Terrible deep ball, by the way. Deep ball accuracy, I should say. He's got the arm to make the deep throws. He just doesn't have the accuracy to make the deep throws right now. Uh, what else do I have right here? A lot of what it looked like he, they ran was the screens, the quick into the flat slants. A lot of what they did, which, hey, I mean – if it's effective, then, hey, good for him, I guess, which, once again, probably could help him out starting right away in the NFL or in a few years or so because he can make those throws. Um, he can do okay with the scrambling, but he's definitely not a scrambler. Uh, and also, he doesn't – what I noticed is he didn't really – I didn't really see a lot of throws where he was throwing it into tight windows. The few that I did, he sometimes made them, but it was – it was a little inconsistent with that. And he just, he, a lot of throws were to open guys. He hit a lot of open guys, which is good. He makes progressions, which is something that not a lot of the quarterbacks in this class does is make reads and progress through reads. He will progress through reads often, which is good. So, uh, I think, uh, I think I like the tape. Like I wasn't too high on Dwayne Haskins, but after watching the tape, I see why people do like him. Definitely wouldn't be a first rounder any other year for me. Uh, but this year he's probably the top quarterback he'll go in the first round um him only being one year starter kind of hurts him but you could tell throughout the year that he was getting better so um it's it's weird it, it's a weird it, there's not a lot of tape on Dwayne Haskins he ha- he just has that one year I think the best situation for him would be to sit a year or two so that he can work on the mechanics a little bit better I wouldn't really want to throw him in right away I think that would be a huge mistake for him but he seems like he learns so he learns as you know playing the game so uh, it's it's a weird one it's it, this is a strange quarterback class um, yeah but he's probably think, QB be, one for me what would be fun to do is to go into one of his games where he just absolutely tore it up with, you know like 400 plus yards because he had a few of those and actually see uh calculate how long the ball was in the air mm-hmm. on those throws so if he threw for 450 yards if the ball was in the air for like you know 70 yards in total of those because mm-hmm. the run after the catch was crazy but he's a good player he is he's good mm-hmm. he's not great he's not exceptional he's not there yet but the progression when you see him from week one to the, the final week you like to see him getting better each week and uh i think that probably will boost his stock because you want to see players getting better and better and better so 
I think yeah. he has a decently high ceiling. Just got to work on that accuracy and, and being more consistent and uh, being better under pressure. And this, this is a good player. The one last thing I'll say about Dwayne Haskins, or kind of the last thing, is that uh, Drew Locke having a pretty good senior bowl might overtake Dwayne Haskins as QB1. So Drew Locke could be QB1 for a lot of teams. So it wouldn't shock me if Drew Locke goes above. But this is still so early. Like, we're still, what, three months out? Yeah, still early, Jan- but. January. It, it, I, I don't think Dwayne Haskins, for a lot of people, is QB1. I don't think he's a lock at QB1. Uh, you know, Drew you Locke, say he's Locke. A, a Drew Lock, <laughs> but so it, it like we still got three months pro days, combines, interviewing, and all that. The combines is always big, so Q, is, yeah, Dwayne Haskins QB one, but isn't the lock at QB one. So let's let's go to a, a lock for the number one player at their position, his teammate. For three Nick games, Bosa this year, <laughs> Edge, Ohio State, six yeah. foot three, two hundred and seventy pounds of a pure, unadulterated animal. <laughs> He's explosive. He's got a great first step. I think the best trait I found with Nick Bosa was his counter moves. He uh, he's so good uh, with that element of his game because uh, if his first move doesn't work, he's got a second, sometimes a third. And he's just going to find a way to go after the quarterback. Uh, he's good at splitting double teams. He does that well. And this is a guy that is going to continue to get double teamed as he progresses to the next level. Uh, and he has a relentless high motor. With you talk about with the counter moves, with the explosion, with the good first step. It goes into his just relentless ability to go after the quarterback. His hands are fantastic. He's got a really strong array of pass rush moves. You've seen the straight arm, the rip, the swipe, inside swim. I mean, you pretty much name it. The push pull. Any every single pass rush move, Nick Bosa pretty much has it in his arsenal. His pad level stays low um, when defending the run. He's a natural edge bender. It isn't maybe so much um, like in the hips, but it, his torso has has some great bend, especially with the uh, the shoulders getting down low and still playing with that speed. And talked about his hands of just how good they are and. It was struggling to find some cons here. I watched a lot of him, mostly 2017 stuff. But when he's been used as a stand-up pass rusher, he hasn't necessarily been as effective, but especially not as a cover linebacker. This is not a 3-4 outside linebacker that can kind of do it all. He's a pure pass rusher, and he's he's a top-five talent, if not top-one talent in this class. He is unbelievable, relentless, and amazing. And his comparison, I'm sorry, it's uh, Joey Bosa's. Is boring, but he reminds me a lot of Joey at Ohio State. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, he had the injury, the lower ab injury. So, he only played three games this past year. But his sophomore season, 16 tackles for losses, eight and a half sacks. It's pretty good numbers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty good numbers. Uh, he's got all the pass rush moves, like you mentioned. Uh, the rip inside, the uh, the speed off the line. He's, su- he's very fast off the line, and he's got the speed to just – there's some place where he would just run right past the tackle. So, uses the speed a lot. But he's got all the pass rush moves. Like, he, he knows how to use all of them. And there's tape where he uses uh, the pass rush moves. So, I really like that. I really like how he has – that. this is why he's the number one prospect because he has – he uses all these pass rush moves. So, uh, great pass rusher. He recognizes plays well too. Like he's got amazing play recognition. Like ru- recognizing it's a run play, recognizing it's a pass play. He he has pretty good play recognition. So he shoots uh, the gaps real well and yeah. stays low. It's yeah. A, he yeah, really, really like doesn't that. have any flaws. Yeah. No. <laughs> he he looked amazing. There's there's a reason why he's uh every most people's number one. Some people don't have him at number one anymore, but most people's number one. Love the hands. He just he's just so good. He's so good. Uh, maybe you could be con- concerned about the injury, but I think he's been back playing football since, like, November. So uh, I think he's going to be fine. And like you said, like, it's boring, but the Joey Bosa comparison, it- it's there. It's definitely there. Watching yeah. the tape, I was like, yeah, this is Joey Bosa. I was trying to think of someone else, but it's Joey Bosa. So I also try, but it's just, like, it- it's just it's in Joey the back Bosa. of my mind the entire time. And they're so similar. They're so uh, similar. Their last names are so similar. <laughs> So I, I really like 
yeah, Nick Bosa, he should be number one overall pick. I I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not number one. He shouldn't escape the top five. Like that'd be oh, he's certainly wild would. if he gets out of the top five. He's I think he should go number one. Unbelievably, I can't really imagine a scenario where he falls out of the top five unless he yeah. Unless re- releases, a, releases a bong video of him taking <laughs> hits out of a gas mask on draft night. <laughs> but to be like this polished of a uh, pass rusher out of college, it's pretty unbelievable. So, yeah, he's yeah. Great. The, the hype is uh, definitely there. It's, uh, I, you know, looking at the tape, you can definitely see what the hype is all about. Really like Nick Bosa, number one overall pick. All right. Uh, there's not really a lot of negatives to say about him, so... He's good. Moving on to the last player, though. Uh, some of that uh, people in the comments are asking for. Hakeem Butler, wide receiver from Iowa State. 6'6", 225. 6'6". <laughs> got not some only, good height to him. Not only is he tall, he's kind of fast, too. I, I saw some speed. I wonder, I'm very interested to see his 40 time because I'm thinking maybe 4'5 for him. 4'5 four four flat? Four, uh, I'd say mid 4'5". Yeah, so if he good. if he's closer to four five flat, that's gonna be amazing for six six. His his strides are so long. Yeah, that is what it comes down to. So obviously the first uh, positive about him is the height. He's six six. Uh, I think he's got good sideline awareness. He seems to know like when the ball's thrown towards the side, he seems to know to get that. You know, well, in college I guess it's that one foot in. So I'm I'm hoping in the NFL he'll know to get the two feet in. Very strong for a wide receiver. The Oklahoma tape is unreal the the touchdowns that he scored in the oklahoma tape was crazy he's a big yak guy yards after catch guy which is crazy for a guy his size mm-hmm. usually you won't think that but he will force missed tackles he will break out of tackles arm tackles it's he'll break out of those so to see a guy that could break i see a receiver that could break out of tackles that's pretty crazy uh he's got strong hands i think he's a pretty good blocker he's got decent release off the line sometimes he does this thing where he does like a little hop or take that step uh like a little step with his uh lead foot you don't really want that too much but overall i think he's got a pretty good release off the line stresses field with the size some negatives about him i think he's really bad with the slants ins and out routes anything where it's like kind of changing the direction i think he's really good with the comebacks curls and hitches i, li- I like those a lot um but the in slants out routes he does he just doesn't run those routes really well so he's kind of got a limited route tree and he sometimes doesn't use his long arms to his, to his advantage he'll make chest catches which is kind of disappointing because he's got really strong hands but it, it, you know he, he, it's it's not he doesn't make chest catches all the time it's just sometimes i've noticed that but if he works on the uh the route tree i think he, he's gonna be pretty good because he's fast he breaks out of tackles um for me probably round three guy mid-round guy it really depends on what his 40 is if he has a really fast 40 he's gonna shoot up draft boards uh, and he's top 10 receiver in this class i think if he had the better uh short yardage route running he would have been uh, a little bit higher but i i like him i, I really like this tape i like i like the his ability to break out of the tackles so. I have here he is a uh, solid hands. He's a long strider who breaks down quickly. So when they play off, um, he has the ability to stretch them out with those long strides and then break down really quickly. So you talk about the hitches, the curls, comebacks, you know, I, two of those were the same thing. But <laughs> he breaks down quickly uh, and has the ability to create a lot of space because of the threat of him going deep with his tremendously long strides. Solid route runner for his size. Wheels talked a little bit about um, the kind of the lateral movement routes. So ins, outs. I don't even know if I've seen him run a, an actual post. It's just not really something that he did a lot of at, uh, at Iowa State. His catching traffic ability is among the best in this class. The body catches, I mean, he does have a tendency to do that, um, but he holds on to the football. So yep. even though I don't like the technique sometimes, it's weird with his size and those long arms. So it, it depends where the football is, how you want to catch it, it, based on where the defender is. But you'd like to see him go out and just extend the hands and, and secure the football that way. Kind of depends in some instances. He's an excellent jump ball receiver. So the 6'6", six, six, it's not like he's a big guy that plays small, like Doriel Green, or not Doriel Green Beckham, <laughs> like uh, Equinemius St. Brown, right, who was 6'5 and played like he was 5'10". 
Hakeem Butler plays like he's 6'6", and he's got good body control. Talked about the sideline awareness. When the ball is in the air, he has the ability to uh, contort and rotate to pick up the football and make the catch. Solid run blocker, and of course, the yards after the catch ability is there. Loves a good stiff arm. Some cons for me, uh, I think his explosion is questionable off the line, and I think he can struggle at times to beat the press. If I'm playing Akeem Butler, I'm going to get up in his, well, not me personally. I, w- I wouldn't do very well. But you take, like, I don't know, a Richard Sherman or uh, someone with some decent size. Uh, I-, I say you take your most physical cornerback on him, even like a Jalen Ramsey, and-, and you just push him at the line, press him. I think you're going to stall him out a lot. Saw that happen. Because uh, even with a cornerback like Chris Boyd, who's terrible, he got he got Hakeem Butler in the Texas tape um, in some instances on press where he just couldn't get by him. And same thing with Devontae Davis on the other side. So if I had to if I had to nitpick there, I would say he can struggle at times to beat press. His release is, is suspect against press and against more physical cornerbacks. But uh, if you play off him, he's going to make you pay because – that that stretch down the field where he's such such a threat, uh, I think has to be a big thing you worry about if you're opposing defenses. I think his talent is the second round. My projection here is one to three. I could really see a team falling in love with him and taking him at the end of the first round. I think his true talent here is probably the second. It's a it's a good receiver class. I don't think there's a whole lot of separation at all, and uh, I don't think it's it's top heavy at all. But it's it's solid throughout. I think a lot of these receivers are gonna gain second round grades for me anywhere from that late first to third range so uh he's a good player my comparison for him is plaxico burris i think that's a really fun one maybe you have to go back a little bit to remember plaxico but the uh the size comparisons there plaxico is 6'5 uh played long another guy who is pretty good after the catch they just they just seem so similar to me when I think about it. So th- I think Akeem Butler is a guy with a thousand yard potential, double digit touchdown potential. Uh, we hope he just doesn't, yeah, I don't know, shoot himself in the leg and end his career. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I really liked Hakeem Butler. Like the tape was good. I just wish he was better because just because of the, the yards after catch ability, I wish he ran those routes a little bit better because if he could get those routes down and maybe it has to do with the fact that he's six, six, he's so tall. That's hard for him to, you know, get down to, make the cuts but if he gets that he's gonna be good because he breaks out of tackle so much he's i really like him i really like him and he's got the long arms so like the the whole catch radius thing he you could kind of throw it in big, his range big 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 <laughs> catch, huge radius. catch radius he's got a yeah. super long arm so um like i said if that 40 time is there he's gonna shoot up for me he's round three for me now but if that 40 time pretty good 40 time he probably will go up to round two for me but like you said the receiver class is pretty good this year but i still think he's a top 10 receiver in this class so that is uh, gonna do it for the uh, prospect breakdown yeah um sequence i know you guys are always interested to know who we're doing next episode so in the next episode we got quinn and williams brian burns rashawn gary and daniel jones a lot of top guys four there. guys four guys yeah Four guys. We're going with four guys. That's a transition, as you guys can tell. Yeah. Maybe. We did it last episode. Decided to do it this episode. We're going with four four prospects every uh, episode now. So, yeah. Those are the four guys we're going with in the next episode. And, as always, leave comments down below. Leave uh, your guys' thoughts about the prospect breakdowns. You know, maybe you think that we missed on something about the prospect. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below. And, uh, also, other comments, by the way, because we are moving into the viewer comments section i don't know if you have any viewer comments but uh i mean we went over we went over the one earlier with the uh the combine with uh yeah guys we didn't really we didn't we didn't go into full in depth um Mm -hmm. talk about the offensive line very briefly lateral movement's a big thing when they run those drills you want to see how quick these guys are and how good their footwork is that's the big thing um and then of course the uh, bench press is always a cool thing to see how how uh how strong these guys are but depending on the arm length it's not really that telling because it's harder for some of these guys with super long arms to bench like orlando brown uh (laughs) for guards you're looking at 10 yard splits in the 40s so they can boost their stock that ways uh, that way but really for offensive linemen it's the footwork in the drill it doesn't boost it all that much for for offensive line it's more how good are you on tape and so they can do these things to help their stock I think if you see some of these guys as freak athletes given size, they can boost up 
like Greg Robinson, who ran really fast for his like 330 pound size, and then I don't know, of course it didn't end up working out. <laughs> I don't know. A wide receivers is obvious. I think running back. I think there, cornerback for sure. Yeah. Well, skill position, 40 time, and I, I personally always like the cone drill to see their like agility. Yeah. I, I like the cone drill a lot. Um, kind of going gauntlet off with the, remains the dumbest drill ever. Yes, yes. <laughs> for receivers. Uh, I like the 10-yard split for defense alignment, too. Oh, yep, yep, yep. So the only positions it doesn't really help that much, quarterback, the, the throwing drills, and you can see touch and accuracy with receivers they've never worked with before, and – you know, see them uncork the long ball. I don't think it does anything to help or hurt their stock. Yep. Uh, offensive line, not too much, but defensive line. Talked about skill positions earlier. If a linebacker runs really fast and they already have it on tape, yeah, that'll boost their stock maybe a little bit. It, uh, I don't know. It's more about tape to me. The and cone drill works for the linebackers too a little bit. But yeah, tape is, lateral tape is definitely bigger. But it, it can. It definitely can. The combo definitely can help out. Uh, prospects if they put you know just do unbelievably so mm -hmm. that's all it has enough fun. to boost you over the next guy yeah so yep. you're not going to jump up three or four spots but you'll just well depending on where you are but uh I mean, you'll jump you can jump up one or two if you have deandre baker versus a greedy williams when deandre baker comes out and runs like four five or four four seven or whatever it is and if greedy williams runs four three eight you know who they're going to go with is greedy williams because you're going to take the higher potential high better athlete better yeah. speed but Let's see bad here. combines can hurt. <laughs> yeah. Bad combines can really hurt. Um, and then another comment I saw, which was kind of an interesting one. So uh, I saw, do you think kickers will be, will be, well, okay, let me read this, how it should be typed. Do you think kickers will be more sought after than normal in the later rounds this year? Which was kind of an interesting one because I thought about it and it's like, maybe? No. It's, it's <laughs> weird because it's like, Kickers be are – there's been a lot of bad kickers. Ages. Yeah, there's been a lot of bad kickers. But, like, I feel like it's almost the opposite effect with the bad kickers is that maybe you should just not draft a kicker and then just try yeah. out a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, the only one where you're thinking of it – I don't even know if he's in this draft class. Rodrigo Blankenship is, like, the only guy that you're really going out of your way to get. I don't think he's in this draft class. I think um, he went re returned. And, uh, you know, you could you even imagine a team trading up for a kicker, say, to, like, I don't know, the second round? <laughs> to, like, you know, the Buccaneers or something? <laughs> for... Roberto Aguayo! <sighs> yeah. And brother so, Ricky. Like, it's just, it's hard <laughs> because even if a kicker performs so well in college, it's different. Like, the hash is different. Roberto Aguayo is the most dominant kicker in college football history. Yeah, and he's a, cool. he can't get a job in the NFL because he was terrible. Yeah, I mean, pe people always get mad when I say this, but Wild's numbers he declined after his freshman year, so at Florida State. So I, I was I thought it was always a mistake, and hey, it was a mistake. You can't take uh, this kicker in the second round. Yeah, Unreal. I think Rodrigo. Let, well, actually, Blankenship let me ask you this: back. You yes. know how Sebastian Janikowski was a first round pick? Crazy. Do you think he lived up to his value? Kind of. I think he's so good for so long. What's the highest you would take a kicker? We'll say Justin Tucker. Ooh, what's Justin, Justin Tucker, Tucker's the best value? kicker of all time. I still I couldn't draft him in the first I round. S there's still like so many p players, like so many position players that'll do more for you. The, like the I thing is, like I see, it's worked so perfectly with the Ravens because he has actually single handedly won them games. Yeah, that's he was our offense for a few years there. I think the highest I would go is the second round, and it would have to be for Justin the best, Tucker. The best yeah. kicker of all time. Yeah. It's – yeah, I don't know. There's just, I a think, lot of uh, them are replaceable. It's either – like, the disparity between percentages is not that much between the worst and the best. It's like 70% is not where you want to be, but 80% is pretty good. Yeah. So, so, I mean, that's only one kick out of 10 extra. I don't know. It's – I think you could just find them in, like, the preseason – I mean, the Ravens had Will Lutz, too, but they already had Justin mm -hmm. Tucker, so they're like, oh, we'll let him go. Like, it's – I think I think that's the move. Just wait for a kicker, see, you know, some kickers that perform in the preseason. Maybe some get, some of them get cut, like Will Lutz did against with the Ravens, and you sign him. 
it's just I think I think it's the opposite. I think it's the total opposite with kickers not performing well. I think you don't draft kickers because you don't want to risk it. You don't want to put that investment in, even even if it's like a seventh round pick. I don't think you want to put that investment in. I think it's better someone, just to try kickers out. Someone asked about Lavisca Chenault next year. If they we think he'll be a first round pick, and I already responded to this. I responded to this four days ago. Uh, I said I would think so. I think it's a good receiver class next year, but LaVisca Ch- uh, Chenault is one of the really, really talented ones. Uh, he looks amazing. So I would say that I, w- I expect him to go in the first round. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about him next year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, any other viewer comments? As always, you- guys, make sure you guys leave some comments on the video portion of the podcast on Bengals channel. Do you think John Gruden would be a good college coach? Dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Dumb question. <laughs> it's how would you? How could anyone? Know? How would anyone know? Yeah. It's about maybe I don't know recruiting and then coaching and then it's you really there's no way of knowing. I think I think John Gruden maybe could answer. recruit well just because he's a you know known guy a, a known head coach but like I don't I don't know. <laughs> no one knows. And a lot of people. A lot of people, uh, they they're just asking for players. Um, I'll say I, I would say I would say spend less time worrying about what players we do because we're kind of deciding that on our own term, um, and worry about some other questions. That Especially are more like insightful. top players. Like we'll get to the top players. If there's like yeah. maybe like a late round guy that you want us to look at, then yeah, yeah like, do that. But like top players, up, uh, like like Quinn and Williams, I, I've seen people ask. It's like we're gonna get to okay. them. <laughs> Yeah, like Drew maybe Locke. drop, we'll drop get to a Drew Sutton Locke. Smith maybe out of NIU. Is that where you went? Or maybe. Eastern Illinois maybe? Somewhere in Illinois. So, like, late round guys. If there's late round guys you guys are interested, leave those comments. We'll get to all the top guys. Trust me. Like like we said, we're going four, four breakdowns in an episode now. So, From Scrub Nation. Going back to the overtime topic. I think you need college rules where maybe you start at your own 25. After the fourth quarter, defenses are typically gassed, and it's much harder to get a stop. So I think both teams need to possess the ball. Well, I think you're right in saying that both teams need to possess the ball. I'm not in favor of starting them at the 25. I think that's a fun college gimmick. I don't really like it for the NFL. I would say uh, just go back to pretty much what you had, um, except for this time you alter them slightly to where it's not do or die. So if you let up a touchdown and the game doesn't end, let both teams possess the ball. Just Maybe the second team has to go for two. There you go. You can't tie. Yeah. You get yeah, you both get one that's, possession. That's exactly so, how I would do it. I would so, so winning the coin toss still has value, but yep. the coin toss doesn't end the game effectively if you're playing in the lead offense. Yeah, I agree. It's just you gotta give both teams the ball. I, I think the touchdown into the game is just dumb. But you All know, right. I think we're uh, about an hour. Time pretty well. I think that's it. Uh both of us, by the way, I know some people were asking. Uh both of us have done mock drafts, so Go check him out if you guys want. Bengal just released one. I don't know when this when the video portion of this is coming out, but if you're watch, if you're listening to the audio, you've version, already seen it. If you're on you've my already show. seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're watching the video portion, you've probably already seen Bengal's mock draft. Uh, if you're watching the audio, he just released one. Go check out on his channel and all that. And yeah, we're, we'll both be doing mock drafts. And I think at some point we'll b- do some uh, fun mock drafts. We, we had a conversation about some yeah, we have, fun we have mock a list. draft If ideas. you guys have any fun mock draft ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below or tweet at us. That's mm-hmm. probably the better spot. Twitter, make sure to follow us both. At Bengal Designs, at WheelsFL. Yep. And um, some of the ideas we already have are dual mock draft, best yep. names mock draft. So, like, number one, maybe Rocky Yassin or Hamp Cheevers to anybody um kingsley kiki could go top first round i don't know yeah so if you have any cool ideas like that leave them down most overhyped players mock draft some fun things but uh, yeah i think that's gonna do it yep uh like much for watching itunes google play spotify for the audio check it out take it easy goodbye Thank you.